some tariqas have the some tariqas have the practice of picturing their sheikh when they're making their dhikr uh, is this shirk la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah so shirk we have to understand what shirk is shirk is <clears throat> in the basic sense, it's saying someone is equal to Allah in some way, in terms of his perfection, in terms of his authority to legislate, this is haram, this is halal, um, <clears throat> in, or in terms of his qualities and attributes, right? And honoring, venerating, not just venerating, ibadah has a different sense to just honoring someone. You can respect your father, but does that respect doesn't mean you're worshipping him so technically if so um, um <clears throat> if a tariqa has an approach where you picture your sheikh um to make dhikr is this shirk no it's not shirk is this something that is um let's just say is it something that's part of the sunnah of the prophet no right absolutely not is it an approach that some sheikhs have Adopted possibly, and they say, you know, I will be a connection to, you know, Allah. It's it's a possible approach. Uh, my, you know, uh, my take on this is, you know, anything that's more than the Sunnah is less than the Sunnah, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam didn't encourage this. He didn't encourage people to picture him um, <clears throat> or picture someone else was uh you know saying la ilaha illallah or something uh, although the ulama do say actually that when you're sending blessings on the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam picturing his features for the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam will enhance the uh, you know the love that you feel for him i keep it in the mic the love that you feel for him sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, in your salawat and so that is uh, you know that's something to do as for the sheikh um i i have some hesitation towards this but um maybe uh, there is a, um, a legitimate uh, way of looking at this uh, so you would have to really speak to uh, someone who advocates this and see if they have a legal basis if they have a basis in the legal you know in the deen that was taught to us by the prophet that was that has been transmitted to us through the the scholars of the religion and that has a, a palpable benefit if it's like that great you know and it doesn't you know it, it's not a case of only if the sahaba did something we can do it otherwise no no the sharia is broader than that but if it's uh, if it's a case of a, a, a scholar or a sheikh of a tariqa advocating this then you know speak to them um <clears throat> it's not a case of <clears throat> you have to understand in these situations, you haven't sold your soul to anyone. In Allah hashtara min al mu'minina bi amwalahum wa anfusahum bi anna lahum al jannah. Allah has purchased from the believers uh, um, their properties and their souls in exchange for them to have the garden. So you sold your soul to Allah, not to any <laughs> any individual. So there should be no uh, you know no hesitancy in asking a religious question. Uh, you know, in order to find what's halal and haram in this, in fact, it's it's a healthy approach. It's a healthy approach. And if it, if it can't be if it can't be explained in a way that has a basis in the Sharia, then just don't do it, right? And <clears throat> ultimately, when you perform dhikr uh, or when you recite the Quran or send blessings on the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the benefits where do they come from? Allah. And whether you know whether you're picturing uh, your sheikh or not, you know I, I highly doubt that has a <laughs> has any sort of a, 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 a implication on the benefit of the dhikr. Allah knows best, um, but you know you can go ask them. La